Finn, who is overcome with grief, approaches Hope about getting help for her father. Spoilers and speculations from the bold and the beautiful B&B John Fenn Finnegan Tanner Novelin may approach Hope Logan Annika Noel about getting some assistance for her father. Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon appears to be completely distraught. He tells Finn that the charred body cannot be Sheila Carter Kimberlin Brown since he sees 12 toes on the corpse, the bold and the beautiful spoilers 10 toes. Finn is concerned about Deacon and can't believe Sheila's death. He claims Deacon informed him that when the body fell into the flames, the sheet blew, and he saw ten toes, the bold and the beautiful spoilers. Is Deacon going crazy with grief? Finn asks Hope about getting help for her father. Finn is aware that Sheila had nine toes. They used one of her toes to identify her DNA when she pretended to be killed by a bear while hiding in a Montana cabin. The crematorium was unable to halt the process. Thus, the corpse's simply ashes and the crematorium operator arrived too late to witness what Deacon claimed he saw. Hope is concerned when Finn tells her this and is unsure what to do it sounds like her father is literally insane with grief for Sheila Finn and Hope now wish they had gone to the crematorium with Deacon to help him process Sheila's death. Since that he claims it wasn't Sheila in the casket B&B spoilers. John Fenn Finnegan isn't sure he could have handled watching. Finn isn't sure he could have managed seeing anyone's body in the oven, let alone someone he knew regardless of who it was. That's why he didn't go, and the same goes for Hope. She didn't think she could face the horrible sight. It is difficult to retrieve DNA from ashes, though it can sometimes be obtained from teeth or bones. However, because the person was entirely incinerated, this may not be possible. If DNA could be taken from the ashes, Finn would gladly provide some of his for matching. That may be the only thing that brings Deacon some closure. Hope feels that it's terrible for Deacon to believe. He saw ten toes in the oven and is unable to accept Sheila's death, the bold and the beautiful spoilers. How can they best help Deacon Sharp grieve? Finn and Hope got together to figure out how they might best assist Deacon grieve and find closure. Finn believes he needs expert help. He would gladly send him to a bereavement support group that meets in the hospital, which he has previously referred survivors to. He understands that loss may affect people in a variety of ways, and that many people believe their loved ones go stalk them, but this is different. One thing is certain. The body was unquestionably Sheila's, otherwise it would not have been discharged from the morgue. If anyone had any doubts, why didn't they examine the corpse's feet or count her toes? Deacon's disturbing phone call the bold in the beautiful B and B spoilers for Tuesday, April 9. Show that Paul Hollis Hollister Hollis W. Chambers requested updates from Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon on how the memorial went. When Hollis questioned Deacon, he appeared shaken and admitted he wasn't feeling well. When Deacon was alone again, he wondered if he was seeing things or if there were ten toes on that body. If there were ten toes, it couldn't have been Sheila Carter Kimberlin Brown. At the Cliff House, John Fenn Finnegan Tanner Novelin told Steffi Forrester Jacqueline McKinnon's Wood that he found some solace at the memorial, and confirmed that Hope Logan Annika Noel was also present to support Deacon Finn was surprised by how much Deacon cared for Sheila during the service. Finn stated that Deacon was struggling to accept Sheila's absence but Steffi had little sympathy for the guy who fostered the fugitive. Finn thanks Steffi for allowing him the opportunity to face what he had lost. So she stated that Sheila had not come between them when she was alive and would not do so now. After reflecting on all of their accomplishments, Finn and Steffi decided they no longer needed to be concerned about Sheila when Deacon called and summoned Finn back to Il Giardino. He explained that it was an urgent matter concerning Finn's birth mother. Steffi wasn't happy about Finn leaving and wanted to be done with the Sheila issue, but he pointed out that this might be the last time they had to talk about her. Finn arrived with questions after Deacon had finished his drink and considered Sheila's chances of survival. 
Finn encouraged Deacon to take a deep breath and reminded him that it was normal to be upset after such an intense memorial. However, Finn felt compelled to put Sheila behind him for good, if only for Stevie's sake. Finn insisted that it was time to let go after Deacon had done everything he could to give Sheila a respectful send-off. Finn understood how difficult it was to accept the Sheila's death, so Deacon spoke up Sheila and asked what if she wasn't. Hope Finn Logan seemed perplexed and Annika Noel held a critical meeting with Senator Forrester Dominguez de Demetz, Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, and R.G. Forrester Joshua Hoffman. After stating that she required them to band together and Thomas Forrester's Matthew Atkinson absence, Hope indicated that she wanted Luna to collaborate closely with Sand on the line, then had more experience than RJ and was a more seasoned, talented Hope for the future. Thus, Hope wanted him to take over now that Thomas had left Hope believed Luna could absorb all of Zen's wisdom and hinted that Zen had many secrets to impart. Luna was uneasy as she exchanged hesitant glances with Send after Zend and Luna left for the design office. Hope chatted with RJ alone, hoping she hadn't caught him off guard with her news. RJ stated that Hope was the boss and that he understood what she wanted. Hope reassured RJ that he would continue to work with Luna, but she also predicted that Luna's time with Zen will benefit her future. On Tuesday's BMB show, Zen inquired about Luna as well being and expressed surprise that Hope would want them to collaborate so closely. Luna wanted to help, but she was concerned that the night she spent with Zen would complicate everything. However, Zen contended that there was no reason for such to interfere with their business relationship. Luna eventually admitted she couldn't go to work since the secret was eating her up inside. In the end, Luna insisted that RG should know the truth. According to the bold and the beautiful spoilers, Luna will begin her confession later this week. But will she really reveal her accidental drug hookup? With Sent Deacon insists Sheila not cremated Finn pushes for mental health. The bold and the beautiful B and B spoilers for Wednesday, April 10. Show that John Fenn Finnegan Tanner Novelin will fail to grasp what Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon is saying. After summoning Finn to Il Giardino, Deacon persuaded him to examine the idea that Shayla Carter Kimberlyn Brown had not died after all. Deacon recounted the person he witnessed being cremated and wondered if it wasn't Sheila. Of course, there hasn't been any mention of the Ten Toes yet, so Finn has no understanding why Deacon would think so. On Wednesday's B&B episode, Deacon will describe how the sheep flew back, revealing those shocking feet at the cremation. Deacon can't believe it was Sheila's body because the corpse had all of her digits. However, Deacon may concede that the evidence was lost because he was unable to halt the cremation in time. Finn will assume that Deacon's grief is driving him insane once he hears the latest updates on his wild story. Finn will believe that Deacon requires mental health treatment, so he may encourage Deacon to seek therapy while also attempting to accept that Sheila has died. Although Finn will not believe he can be the one Deacon talks to about all of this Deacon will encourage Finn to actually listen to what he is saying. Deacon's ten toes are haunting him now, so he'll stick to his claims and remind Finn that Sheila has already cheated death. Finn will feel unsettled when he exits the dinner since Deacon is still convinced that Sheila is alive deep down. Finn may realize Deacon is correct about Sheila's cunning and capacity to recover from even the most improbable situation. Even if Finn doesn't accept it yet, he may seriously contemplate the possibility that Sheila had a lookalike who died that night. According to Other Bold and the beautiful teasers Luna Nozawa Lisa Yamato will discuss her confession decision with Zen Forster Dominguez Dylan Demetz who may question her commitment to telling R.G. Forrester Joshua Hoffman the truth, Luna doesn't think she can bear the guilt anymore. Especially now that Hope Logan Annika Noel has asked her to collaborate with Sand on her design company. This hope for the future dilemma is pushing Luna too far. So she feels it's time for R.G. to learn about the special mints and hallucinations that led her down Zin's passionate road. 
According to the bold and the beautiful spoilers, Luna intends to reveal devastating Luna news to a Archie, crucial decision so we'll editors independently choose all of the products and services displayed. However, Snopes.com may earn a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the merchant may obtain certain auditable data for financial reporting. Liam has visited the Cliff House with a stuffed animal. They joke around, and then he adds it's wonderful knowing she and the kids are safe. Life sure got easier with Sheila gone. Liam inquires whether the memorial had gotten Sheila out of Finn's system. He should have been present with his wife and family stuff. He says he saw it close your and reminds them that they don't have to worry about Sheila anymore. Liam hopes Steffi does not feel alone in this. Steffi reminds him that she's not alone. Finn is determined to put Sheila behind them. She feels more patient with her husband now that Sheila has left and will never return more. Steffi is in for some payback. Liam says it's still weird that Sheila Carter is gone forever. Steffi acknowledges that both Finn and she will need time to comprehend this. Liam wants to know where the good doctor is. Steffi claims he went to meet with Deacon, who is dealing with Sheila's death. Liam can't understand Deacon falling for Sheila. He's always been street smart. Steffi has no pity for the man, but Finn does. He assured her that they would finally stop talking about Sheila Liam, stuffy bed and breakfast. Finn makes a frown at Ilgardina when Deacon suggests Sheila isn't dead and wonders. What if it were true? Finn claimed she died in his home. How could he have thought she was alive? Deacon claims he saw it with his own eyes. The person being cremated had ten toes, ten toes, Finn. Finn tries to speak sense into Deacon, but he knows what he witnessed. I looked at her, I looked at her, and it was Sheila, the man inquired if he wanted to press the button. It was the most difficult thing he had ever done. But as the box was being inserted, the sheet slipped off and he noticed it. She had ten toes, Deacon Finn bed and breakfast Finn suggests that it is not uncommon for loved ones to believe they saw something Deacon exclaims, I know what I saw. I saw ten toes. He brings up the question, what if it wasn't Sheila that was cremated? Finn raises his eyebrows and Deacon takes a drink. RG inquires at Forrester about Hope's level of stress regarding Hope for the future. She's around a tenor tells her things are okay. Hope points out that the last time Thomas was off the line, it was almost shelved. RJ swears that he's end and Luna will work together. They have her back. Hope appreciates this and believes they have an excellent game plan. She teases that she has her super talented younger brother on the line. She believes it will be beneficial to have Luna collaborate closely with Send, who has so much to offer. RJ recalls that there was tension between him and Zend after he was sent to work on Grandad's line, but that is in the past. Hope inquires as to his thoughts on Luna, and since collaboration, RJ believes that is excellent for her right now. Hope tells her brother that they are the next generation of Forrester. She was concerned about doing this without Thomas again. But with his support, she feels more at ease. They discuss Luna's best features. RG describes her as an extraordinarily honest person who has been a bright spot in his life. We are lucky to have her more new details about B and B guest star in the design office. Puppy arrives just as Luna has decided to tell RG about her night. With Zend they argue, but Luna insists that lying is not who she is. She's going to tell him, and there's nothing they can say to stop her. Lying to your loved one is a form of torment. Poppy will not try to talk her out of it. She let her down and gave up the mints. She's also tired of pressing her to ignore her heart's desires. If you want to inform RJ about what happened, you should. I am very sorry, sweetheart. They embrace Wells and watches on after Poppy leaves and says your mom loves you very much. Luna also adores her and is thankful that she quit attempting to persuade her not to tell RJ the truth. She resents how this will affect Zen's connection with his cousin, then agrees with Poppy that she needs to tell RG the truth. He sees it eating away at her, and he does not want that. I care about you too much, 
then tries to reassure her that she will not lose RJ Luna, explains that it was all due of her mother's meant Zan should not have approached his cousin's girl. RJ wonders in the main office that how he ended himself working for the family firm. He considers himself fortunate and is confident that their shared values of transparency and trust will help to improve hope for the future. More B&B cutscene at the Cliff home. Steffi informs Liam that Baker stopped by the other day and confirmed Sheila's death with self-defense. He is not surprised but pleased to hear it. Steffi asks how he's doing. Liam is doing some soul-searching and addressing unpleasant questions, such as whether he is the type of man he would like to see his girls with. Not really. He admits to the waffling between her and Hope, saying he needs to figure out who he is. Maybe he simply wants to be a decent father for a while. Steffi has observed his progress and told him he should be proud. Out of himself, Liam tears up. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you more. Who is hiding Sheila at Al Giardino? Deacon says, I'm not making this up. When I saw her feet, I noticed ten toes. That image is etched in my mind. Finn claims his mind is playing tricks on him. Deacon grimaces and smacks his forehead. Finn tells Deacon that he's clearly devastated, but he has to let go. He saw Sheila in the crematorium. Therefore, she was definitely there. He understand it's difficult to take, but Sheila has died. Deacon drops to his toes and sips the remainder of his glass. Deacon Finn bed and breakfast. Next on the bold and the beautiful. Luna is determined to tell RG about her night. With sand in a torture, Deacon confronts Rich about Sheila fencing's the Cornish absolutely insane, the bold and the beautiful B and B spoilers for Wednesday, April 10, 2020. For C. Finn listening to Deacon's story and then becoming concerned about his would be stuff over the bold and the beautiful spoilers. Deacon attempts to make sense. Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon had replayed the events at the crematorium in his head. He can still see his beloved Sheila Carter's Timberland brown feet, minus the one toe she chopped off herself to make it appear as if she had been mauled by a bear B&B spoilers Wednesday, April 10. Finn thinks Deacon is absolutely insane. He recalls how sexy that was, especially when Sheila showed him her four-toed foot and called him daddy. But the woman who was burned to a crisp and resembled Sheila had ten entire toes, so it couldn't have been Sheila Wright. He had seen some odd things in his life that he wasn't sure about, but he was certain that this woman was on her toes. Also read the bold and the beautiful spoilers. Deacon's breakdown and revenge revealed when he gives John Fenn Finnegan Tanner novel in the news. He hopes Finn would take him seriously finished Bedford Finn had just finished telling Steffi Forrester Finnegan Jacqueline McSinnons with that she would never have to fear Sheila again. Sure, he had mixed thoughts over his insane biological mother's murder, but he also recognized she was a threat to his family. After all, she shot him and Steffi and left them for dead two years prior, and she had broken into his house, which is why Steffi stabbed her in the chest. Except Deacon now claims it wasn't Sheila at all because the dead body that resembled her had ten toes. How could this be? Sheila was lying in a pool of blood on his living room floor, and he recognized her. However, he never looked at her toes. Still, he believes Deacon's grief is playing tricks on him. He must be losing his sanity. Deacon continues to insist that Sheila is not dead. What will it take to get Finn to believe him? Will he have to go find Sheila himself to get the definitive proof? Perhaps Finn will determine that he is the foremost authority on mental health and have Deacon committed.